Uh, this is a canyon that we saw just after Dead Play. It's nothing special, just a canyon, I guess. And this is the Cape of Good Hope. So, um, they say that this is the southernmost tip of Africa. And you can walk out right here, and that's where you see the Atlantic, the Indian, and the Arctic Ocean all meeting together. Alright, so just a couple things about what we did while we were there. I was in a group uh, in Tanzania, and we collected stories from village elders. And this was for our conservation class, and something that the villages were incredibly concerned with is that oral stories weren't getting passed down anymore, that the tradition had kind of stopped. And so what we decided to do was form a group, go out to the villages with translators, collect these stories, and turn it into a book. Um, so this is myself, and this is my, my tent mate, Bailey. This is our translator, Makanyaga. And he's actually looking at the finished product of our book in this picture. Um, we, would, we went out every day for probably a week and a half, about two weeks. Um, and we would hike anywhere from an hour to two and a half hours to get to the surrounding villages. Um, where we were, there's five villages, and it's in a star shape. And so, you know, you start from the top of one mountain, have to hike down, and then back up to get to the next village. So, um, this was one of our hikes, actually. And this was a different translator here, Modi. Uh, something I'd like to point out, though, this village over here is the village of Sunga. And it looks really close, but that... Sunga was actually like an hour and a half to get to, and somehow it is all hiking uphill, both there and back. I don't know how that happened, but um, this, right past this, is a straight drop off. And you actually kind of have to hold on to everything around you because you just slide straight down. So hiking back up that was definitely not fun, but some of the stories that we got were amazing. We got everything from children's stories to sayings of the wise. Um, the sayings of the wise, we call them that. They're very short, um, kind of they're, they're just very short sayings, and it's to teach kids the ways of life. So some that we heard were, um, don't play with chameleons, because if you do, they'll get stuck in your hair, and the only person who can take it out is your uncle. The only reason that they told kids this is that chameleons are going extinct in Tanzania, and they don't want kids to play with them and to kill even more than already happening. Um, there was one about, if your wife is pregnant, and you are laying in bed together, don't cross over the top of her, because if you do, you will be tired forever. You will be a tired old man. Uh, but really, they just told kids that so that the husband won't accidentally kick the baby as he's getting out of bed, so. Uh, this is us interviewing, is that? that is the supervisor of the water pump. So there's a water pump that is in the center of these five villages. So one thing that's really interesting, when you guys need water here, we just go to the tap and turn it on. When they need water there, the women of your village will hike two hours to get to this water pump with three five-gallon buckets. They fill all of them up, one goes on top of their head, one in each hand, and they hike back up to their village. And that's how you get water for everything you need, for cooking, for bathing, for just about anything. You hike to go get your water. So while we were there, we definitely conserved water. Any water that got reused, you would wash your hands with. Any water that you didn't use here, you would use there. Um, this was actually where, this was one of the first places we went, and you started getting into the um, lack of hygiene, I guess, that we eventually fell into. We showered about every five days while we were here, just because there was no water. And when you did want to shower, it came in a big bucket, and you had a little scoop and just picked it up and poured it on yourself, and that's how you showered. Uh, a lot of time the water was freezing cold, and it was cold outside, so it was, uh, it was a nice cold experience. You didn't want to do it that often. We had some people that went almost a week and a half without showering. Um, <laughs> this was just kind of a fun picture. Uh, one day we went out, and we were collecting stories. We'd been out for so long, and it was going to be a really long hike back. So our uh, translator said, hey, let's stop. Let's get some food. So this is just a little, I don't know, food shack, I guess. Uh, it has one table in it, and the floorboards are falling out, so when you look down, you are looking off the side of a mountain. And all of it's all made with sticks, and they serve you chips namayai, which is potatoes and eggs, basically. It's all fried up into this really good dish, but this was the first time that we had eaten out without any teachers, without anybody. And what we're pointing at up there is this huge chunk of meat fat that was just hanging above our table. We have no idea what it was for, but it smelled terrible, it was attracting flies, and you had to really try not to look at it while you were eating, so we ran into a lot of interesting eating. 
Um, this is just us out again. Um, for a lot of people in the villages that we started in, they'd never seen white people. And the, the word for white people is in Zungu, and people would yell at us, at us as we walked through the villages. You'd walk through and people would say, Mzungu, Mzungu. Um, and so these gentlemen who spoke no English at all, they stopped our translator. And they're saying, you know, what on earth? You've got seven white people walking through our village. What is going on? But once we explained it to them, they got super excited. And we stopped on the side of the road. And we collected stories from them for about an hour and a half. And uh, they were just incredibly excited because it was something that they wanted to continue on. They wanted these stories to continue on. So... Okay, um, something else we did when we were in Malawi, which is that long, skinny country, we job chatted. So we were in the in Nkata Bay for three weeks. While we were there, we went into town and we found a place to job shadow someone. So this is my friend Lauren, and this is Mr. Mbewe, and she is shadowing him as a wood carver. And he pretty much does the wood carvings for the entire village. Um, things like intricate pipes for people's birthdays or chess sets. Um, he also would carve, so I mean he would carve things like into the front of this, like different animals and scenes into the front of bars and posts and all that. So she shadow shadowed him for about three weeks and by the end of it she was actually making all of her own stuff, so it was really cool. This is Mr. Chumia. So right, right here are teachers. This is Mr. Chumia and he is considered the village elder if you ask him his age, he says he is 70 plus, so no one actually knows how old he is. But uh, this is his daughter, Monica, and they came to dinner one night. My friend was shadowing Mr. Chumia, and he he's considered very wise because he was originally a politician. He worked on the school board. He's worked in the school systems and in the clinics and all sorts of different things. So, um, yeah, so we followed him. We had people painting at a school. This was a school that when we got there, all of the walls were gray. So we whitewashed the walls, we started painting, and when we were done, it looked like that. Um, a lot of people have asked me why there's English on the walls instead of Chichewa, which is what's spoken in Malawi. Um, really, once you get out of Tanzania, it's, English is known by pretty much everybody. So at this stage in these kids' lives, they already know Chichewa really well, and so when they go to school, they learn English. And so from here on, people learned English when they were in school. And where did I shadow at? This would be at the uh, local HIV AIDS clinic. So what we did there was free testing for HIV AIDS, free testing for malaria, handed out things like safe sex preventatives, condoms, birth control, that type of stuff. Um, and then basically just counseled people. They would come in with all sorts of questions and all sorts of problems, and so even if they weren't getting tested, they would come in just to get their questions answered. So I followed this man. His name is Chipuliro. Um, he is the nurse at the clinic. The testing of HIV AIDS is actually all done by volunteers. He does the malaria testing and the preventatives. So I would follow the volunteers, and then mostly him and I would just sit and talk about life and politics and that type of stuff. So. Um, he would tell me how bad he wanted Obama to win. This was before the election, so him and I would sit and predict what we thought was going to happen in American politics. Um, people and languages. I kind of just wanted to talk a little bit about the different people and the different languages that you'll find. So in Tanzania, this is our friend Baiki. And Baiki is a Maasai warrior. So in Kenya and Tanzania, the biggest tribe that the two countries have is the Maasai tribe. Um, the, one of the things for the Maasai men, to become a man, you have to, with your tribe, kill a lion. So for all the men in here, you wouldn't be considered a man until you, with your tribe, killed a lion. And you can't marry a woman until you've been considered a man. So there's no marrying until you've killed the lion. Um, Baiki only spoke Swahili and two different tribal languages. So in Tanzania, their president made a unified language, which is Swahili. Um, the problem with Tanzania is there's over, I think, like 100 tribes, and each tribe has their own language. So you've got over 100 different languages in one country. So the president picked Swahili, and he said everyone in school will learn Swahili so that we can all communicate with each other. Um, and so that's where we learned Swahili, which was awesome. We had full conversations with people who had no English, just in Swahili. So.